Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new week. Uh, hope you had a great weekend. Right, let's begin this time with a word of prayer, and uh, we'll start with the lesson. Uh, Shri Kumar, uh, is it okay if you can please lead us in prayer? Sure, Pastor. Thank you. Precious Father, we thank you, praise you, honor you for this wonderful morning. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for your divine wisdom and grace, which is which you are revealing, which you, which you are pouring upon us, O God. We pray that, Father, prepare our heart, O Lord Master, receive every word which is going to come through the, through the mouth of your servant, O God. Anoint him, Lord Master, and let every word that it edify our, our spirit, man, let it strengthen our faith, O Lord Master, and let be able to move further. We thank you, Father God, that you are answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. You. Amen. Thank you, Shri Kumar. Right. So last week we completed chapter 12. We looked at strategic partnership. Uh, this week we'll go to chapter 13, which is a very interesting uh, topic, uh, which is leadership. Now, leadership is something that we can see in every aspect of our lives. You, it may be an organization with just 10 people or even a ministry with 10 people. Uh, leaders is something that is developed over time, right? Uh, leadership, well, the first thing that comes to our mind is influence, right? Uh, they're able to influence others, right? Uh, uh, another uh, word that comes to our mind when you say leadership is position, right? Uh, or authority. Uh, now, there are different you know, kinds of leaders that we can see around us, right? There are with different temperaments, different styles. Now, every leader has different qualities, right? Uh, and so the Bible is going to teach us uh, several principles, right? On how you and I uh, can be good leaders and become better leaders, right? Now, I'm sure that all of us, right, uh, wherever we are, we don't want to be in the same place. Uh, we want to grow. We want to develop ourselves. Uh, now, if you look at ministry also, you know, you st we start off small. We say, okay, let me serve in these areas. And you want to, you know, uh, uh, study the word, pray, seek God, ask God to open doors. And God is a God who wants to bless his people, his children, uh, and, you know, increase them. Uh, remember in the whole of the Old Testament, uh, uh, after the people of Israel came out of Egypt, God said, I want to bless you. I want to lift you up, right? Uh, there are verses in Deuteronomy, he says, you'll be the head and not the tail, meaning I will give you a position, right? So this chapter is very interesting. We're going to be talking about and learning uh, essential principles on leadership. Now we have good leaders, we have average leaders, we have excellent leaders, we have poor leaders, right? Uh, and, and so the biblical principles that we're going to learn today is going to help us to be excellent leaders, right? So I'm on uh, page, I think it's page 108, chapter 13, leadership, right? So let's go point by point. You have questions, feel free to stop me and ask questions as well, right? Uh, so first point, if you don't see it, you cannot lead people into it. Right, let's read Matthew chapter 15 and verse 14. Matthew 15, verse 14. Yes, could anyone please read that? Matthew 15 and verse 14. Okay, it says, Let them alone. They are blind leaders of blind. And if the blind lead, leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. Yes, amen. Thank you, Mangi. Now, it's interesting that this is what Jesus is telling his disciples. He's saying, uh, he's talking, referring to the Pharisees and the leaders in the synagogue, in the temple, saying, let them alone, leave them be. They are blind leaders leading the blind. And when a blind leads a blind, they both will fall into a ditch. Now, we know that Jesus was not talking about the physical blindness, but they were spiritually blind. They did not see Jesus as the Messiah, uh, but they were still, you know, uh, doing the things of going to the temple, offering sacrifices, doing all of that. But they were spiritually blind. 
And so in Jesus here saying blind, he, he meant that they were spiritually blind, right? And the reason they didn't have a vision, they didn't have the foresight to see that, okay, this is the Messiah. He is the Messiah that we've been waiting for. Now, it's not like the others didn't see it, right? Many others saw that Jesus was the Messiah. By now, Jesus already had his disciples. Many of them pledged allegiance to Jesus. They said, yes, he is the Messiah. But here, Jesus is referring to the Pharisees and, and the Sadducees who are already in leadership. And he's saying, they are leaders, but they are blind leaders. They don't see the things of God. And if a blind leader you know, leads other people, they, they both will fall into a ditch. It's a blind leading the blind. Right? In Judges 21, 25, it says, in those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Picture that Old Testament, they've come out and everyone are doing what they feel right in their own eyes. There was chaos. There was no leadership. That's when the people said, give us a leader, give us a king, give us a king. It was not God's real intention to do it, but because they kept asking, give us a king, nothing's going right. God gave them a leader, right? Now, leaders are able to influence people, right? Uh, leaders uh, have a vision. They need to be able to see the vision in their mind's eye, right? Leaders provide vision for a future. They provide direction. They provide um you know, uh, leadership qualities uh, to help, you know, reach that goal. Leadership requires the ability to see the future and envision what is the outcome, right? So we may be in a, uh, in a ministry, maybe, you know, uh, maybe some of us may plan to start your own ministry after Bible college or even now. God has chosen you to be a leader. Remember this, leadership requires the ability to see the future and envision it in its outcome, right? I'm sure we've all read many testimonies of many pastors and you know, leaders who, who just started with nothing, probably two, three people. And, but what was it that they were able to, yes, there is the spiritual side of, you know, praying, seeking God, building yourself in the spirit. All of that is true. But there is also the aspect of a leader seeing, okay, now it's 10 people in a small hall. Uh, but 10 years from now, I'm going to see 500 or 1,000 people sitting in a bigger hall. But right now, there's just 10 people. Now, if we don't see it in our mind's eye, if we don't envision it, we don't, you know, declare that vision and work towards that vision, we will be, we are blind, right? A leader without a vision is blind, right? So always remember, you may be some uh, somebody who's just a cell group leader also. But you need to apply this. See your cell group in a place where, you know, uh, you know, uh, I want to see miracles. I want to see signs and wonders happening. Maybe there's just 12, 15 people in the cell group, but you want to see the things of God happening. You're envisioning it. You're envisioning people coming in, people from other faiths coming and accepting the Lord Jesus as their personal savior. When you see that as a leader, it's wonderful. Right, your eyes are open, and you'll begin to work towards it. I remember when we came to Mangalore. Uh, you know, I was reading the book Spiritual Leadership by uh, forget his first name, but it's J. Oswald, uh, uh, Spiritual Leadership, it's a wonderful book. And uh, I had read it earlier on, but I just you know was trying to refresh my memory and reading that again. Uh, and we were again, you know, 10, 12 people. I remember visioning the church having, you know, uh, maybe about 60, 70 people in a year or 100 people in two years. Uh, but there were only some, probably eight, 10 people. 
They said, we, we will work. One day it will be full. Right? One day we will see those chairs filled up. Uh, but it's a process. Right? So you, uh, we can't sit and keep thinking about it and do nothing. Right? We look at other at, uh, attributes also in leadership. But very, very important. Have a vision. Right? Uh, even, even for your family. Right? Uh, you know, I have two little boys. One is six and one is four. Every day we pray in the morning and, uh, and I pray over them and I say, one day I want to see them, you know, serving the Lord, whatever they want to be, uh, you know, uh, in their career. So whatever part they take, that's uh, it's okay. But whatever they're doing, I also want to see them serve the Lord, right? Uh, and, and so I keep, you know, all of us, I'm sure all of us do this. So we keep telling our children, okay, do this. This is something that is good. This is what, you know, we. this is why we believe in God. This is what Jesus did for us. We keep explaining it to them. We keep showing videos to them. Uh, and what are we doing? We are raising them up um, to have a vision, to, have, to build leadership qualities in them, right? Uh, second point, maintain proper hard attitudes. Now it's easy to, you know, uh, it's good to have a vision and you say, okay, this is what I want to do. Uh, but in that process, we may end up having wrong attitudes, right? Uh, attitudes of the heart is very important as a leader, right? Let's read Matthew chapter 20, 25 to 28. Matthew 20, 25 to 28. Yes, could one of us please read that? Uh, Matthew 20, 25 to 28. So Jesus got them together to settle things down. He said, you, ob you have observed how, godly, how godless rulers throw their weight around, how quickly a little power goes to their heads. It's not going to be the way, you, the way with you. Whoever wants to be the great must become a servant. Whoever wants to be the first among you must be your slave. That is what the Son of Man has done. He came to serve, not to be served, and then to give away his life in exchange for the many who, who are held hostage. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Abhinas. Right. So Jesus is uh, talking to his disciples here again. He said he got them together, settled them down, and he said he knew that, you know, these disciples are going to be leaders soon when I'm gone. And so he was preparing them. He's saying, now you've seen the leaders in the world. You have seen probably the Pharisees, the Sadducees. You see how, how godless they are. They are throwing their weight around. Uh, how a little power goes into their head, which, you know, the message translation is very, very elaborate. It says, you know, they throw their weight around. Uh, hey, I'm a leader. You know, uh, that that kind of an attitude and uh, how a little power goes to their head, right? Uh, they, they keep telling themselves, I'm a leader, I'm a leader, right? Uh, and and it, uh, in a wrong way, in a wrong attitude, it goes into their mind. But what did Jesus follow that up with? He's saying, so much so, it's not with you. You all are going to become leaders. And when you become leaders, remember this, you must be a servant, Right? Uh, whoever among you wants to be a leader, first become a servant. First you should be a slave. Because the Son of Man has come not to serve people, but to, uh, uh, he, not to be served, but to serve people. So leadership is about not just authority, position, but it's about serving people. Right? And we're going to look at three heart attitudes of godly leadership. Right, uh, three heart attitudes of godly leadership. Uh, first one is servanthood. You know the Lord Jesus. Uh, he was, you know, he so many places he expressed his leadership qualities in a servant-like attitude. Right. By now, by the Last Supper, Jesus has already gained a lot of fame. People know who Jesus is. He's a wonderful man. He's healing people. He's a leader. Thousands of people are following him. 
all of that didn't go into Jesus' head, right? What did he do? He said, get ready for the Last Supper. And then he meets his disciples and he washes his disciples' feet as a sign of servanthood, as a sign of humility to say that even though I'm the son of man, I'm God in flesh, even though people look up to me with very high regards and high standards, they have a lot of respect and honor for me. But as a leader, I want to keep myself humble and have this attitude of a servant, right? He serves the people he leads, right? He serves in humility, in meekness, in sacrifice. And the Lord Jesus set the perfect example. The Lord Jesus served people in humility, meekness, with sacrifice, and service. Now, I want to be careful. I, I, I want to also explain this part. Now, being a servant and being humble and meek is not only, you know, just folding your hands or oh, whatever you say, I will do. Right? Uh, that's not what it is. Right? It, it, uh, yes, it's a hard attitude. You don't have to go in front of people and say, oh, you know, uh, whatever you say, I will do. You know, uh, I'm a humble person. No, we don't have to do all of that. Right? As leaders, there's this balance that we have to find where we say, okay, certain things need to be done. And we get those things done as leaders. We work towards it. And there's also this place of, uh, you know, being a servant. Right, walking in humility. Now, if there are people in your team who are not performing on a regular basis, underperforming, we looked at it in the previous chapters as well. As a leader, you can't say, oh, I'm a servant. I've come to serve people. So, uh, you know, you can't call that person and say, you know what, I'm a servant leader. So, you know, please do your work properly. If you don't do, the whole team will be, no, that's not what we, what we meant. Um, we see the Lord Jesus in many places when people didn't accept him. He didn't go and say, please come into my team. No, he just moved away. He just walked off. He looked at people who accepted him. So servanthood is a hard attitude. It's not an ex exterior, uh, external, you know, uh, attribute of saying, okay, please, uh, can you, no. So as leaders, we should find that balance, right? of how to handle people. And even as we read, uh, read the word, read books on leadership, listen to sermons, uh, we can understand. And even when we put our hands to the plow, uh, take on leadership roles, we will learn uh, about this, right? Where we can balance it out and say, okay, I, I, I want to be uh, serve as a servant as well, but also there's this responsibility of behaving like a leader. Second one is passion. A leader must be passionate about the vision and what the organization stands for. Right? Uh, how, how is it expressed? Uh, it's expressed through enthusiasm. It's expressed through, uh, you know, and demonstrated through hard work, the ability to stay focused to the vision. Uh, uh, and remember, Enthusiasm is something that is contagious, right? It inspires others, it energizes others. It, uh, and, and it's very important as leaders to keep that fire burning, to have that passion, right? Uh, let's read Romans chapter 12, 11 and 12, the message translation. Romans 12, verses 11 and 12. Yes, any one of us? Romans 12, 11 and 12. Do not burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and flame and aflame. Be alert servants of the master. Carefully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Thank you. Sir. Amen. Thank you, Mankey. Now here the words don't burn out doesn't uh uh, refer to the you know the the literal term that you know we use nowadays which is you know being stressed out and burnt out uh, you know sometimes we say no I'm, I just feel a burnout uh, uh, you know too much of work I feel a burnout no uh, this is more of 
don't burn, don't let that vision to burn off, right? Uh, keep that vision fueled, aflame. Uh, be cheerful. And when hard times come, don't quit. Now, let me give you this example. Imagine, you know, we have a, there's a church, a, a ministry, right? And we have maybe vibrant leaders, uh, sorry, uh, you have vibrant youth in the church, right? Uh, and these youth are, you know, when the worship time comes, they like to dance. They like to express themselves in worship. They like games. Uh, you know, they like to be involved in church activities, every time friendly, talking. You know, you've got vibrant youth in a church. Now, as a leader, imagine I appoint somebody, a youth leader, to oversee them. Imagine I appoint somebody who doesn't like games who doesn't like to talk too much right or uh, somebody who's you know always quoting bible verses uh, or somebody who's you know uh, saying no no during worship you should always you know uh, close your eyes and you should stand and you should pray prayerfully worship the lord imagine i appoint that kind of a leader for these youth one of these two things will happen. One is the youth will leave and find a church where they can express themselves and be themselves. Two, the youth who don't leave will become like the leader. All of a sudden, they don't like to dance. They don't like to enjoy the worship. They don't like to express themselves. They don't like youth meetings. Why? Because the leader is like that. So it's very important as leaders to be passionate. You may say, okay, how long to be passionate? How long should I be passionate about this? I'm doing the same thing over again. Refuel. Refuel. Ask God to refuel. Uh, fan into flame that vision. Right? You may be doing it for 10 years. I say, oh man, it's getting monotonous. Refuel. Say, hey, as a leader, I have to energize myself. I have to refuel. I have to make sure the fire is burning. And only then can my team experience uh, what I, uh, you know, uh, fulfill the vision of the organization. If I burn out and if I say I, I'm tired, everything has gone monotonous, then how is my team or my uh, youth members going to, you know, uh, catch the vision? Imagine this, you, you know, you're in a phase of a burnout and then you have some, you know, 10 young youth, youth come into the church. Say, hey, why is this man, the youth pastor like this? Or why is the youth leader like this? He's so dull. He's so... They're not going to catch the vision. Right? Uh, yes, Elisha has a question. How does passion and leadership express itself? Yes, it's a good question. So... Um, Elisha, some of the ways that it expresses itself is you, right, uh, so for example, uh, you can always remind the, the team members. So you express it by saying, hey, I know we're going through a tough time. I know we're going through a hard season, a lot of work ahead, but be encouraged because we're fulfilling this vision, right? You're all part of the success. We're all going together forward. So. One thing is you're, you're giving those talks, energizing them. You know, our words are powerful, right? The Bible teaches us. So uh, one of the ways uh, 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 that a leader can express passion is to have that, you know, uh, those maybe meetings and say, hey, I know everything's looking dull. Maybe some of you are feeling low. Uh, you know, sometimes the weather is not suitable for working. Uh, but as a leader, you can have those meetings and say, hey, we're all in it together. Come on, let's, you know, encourage ourselves. A pep talk can really do so much, right? I remember in the uh, when I was working in the IT sector, uh, we had one very energetic man. Uh, he was not even a leader, but he was always smiling, always happy. So they said, you come and just give us all a pep talk. Right? So he would come, okay, come on, guys, you know, uh, we're going to start off this day. Don't look at the weather. Don't look at what you had for breakfast. And he will all give us, you know, in his talk, it, it, it was not like he was, you know, uh, he was just, you know, making us all joyful. He would crack a couple of jokes in between and say, hey, you know what, this is what the vision is. So we used to 
all of a sudden there was this you know we go back back to our work to our cubicles you know the first thing that comes to our mind is hey this guy you know this is some kind of a joy okay feel okay let's work you know we've come here to work uh, so one of the ways is through talking and meeting see meetings where you can energize them yes elisha go ahead uh, thank you very much pastor um i am concerned with uh, the passion of leadership because of yeah. a practical um mm. challenge that um i would say i am having with a leader i am working with mm. um you see we are different people we are different people of different temperaments so some of us our temperament are such that you wouldn't see us always uh, talking always um with this outward looking yet um, we calmly and um in a very cool way get the things that are supposed to be done they we get them done we get them done excellently and I am currently working with a leader who who thinks that who sees that um as a youth you must always be on fire you must always be this with a youthful exuberance mm. which not all of us can be that because of our individual temperamental okay. uh, differences yes yeah, so I, I i if you happen to work in leadership and you don't appreciate some of these differences in persons and you want the people to be like you um, what are some of the consequences that the whole team is likely to to suffer yes all right lesha so uh lesha i just want to uh, re, uh you know just say this now as leaders we do want our people to be like us right we don't want them to be exactly like us we are not you know uh, one of the things that we always say in apc is we are not uh, uh, reproducing the same kinds why because we all have like you said elisha we all have different temperaments we all have you know some may be energetic some are very quiet but they get the work done right some of them who are energetic and always you know joyful every time they may not get the work done maybe some of them are like quiet but they get the work done and they're perfect in their work they do it really well um so during those times right uh, uh one of the things that we can do is uh you know firstly we we don't want you know there are people who are uh, you know they feel you know they they are not expressive in their nature they're just very quiet um uh, one of the things we can do is individually talk to them you know uh ask them you know uh are things all right with you uh but most most likely that you know they by nature they are like that right they just shy or they introverts they don't want to you know uh, jump around and shout and scream or talk too much but they like to work um as long as they're able to hold that vision and they feel that you know uh i'm in this vision it's all right right so here's the thing in leadership remember the lord jesus he had 12 people all 12 of them had were different you know peter is short tempered you know john and james are saying can you give me uh, let me sit on either side of you once you go to heaven then you've got uh, judas saying don't use that money for this uh, you know you got all kinds of different people uh, so so elisha like we what we saw on point 1 yes leaders are able to influence people but leaders are not reproducing the same kind right i don't want to create uh, you know uh, raise up a leader who's exactly like me right he has to do exactly what i do if i'm joyful he should be joyful if i'm sad he should be sad no no uh, but as leaders we have the ability to influence so where, where we can say hey uh, you know this person is uh, 
uh, you know, maybe somebody who is very quiet, doesn't really talk much, but I'm able to, uh, when I able to influence him and say that, hey, uh, you know, you're working for this vision, here's the bigger vision, and, uh, and they continue to be quiet and all of that, the bigger purpose is fulfilled, right? That, you know, they're, they're not upset with you, they're just the way they are. So that in those ways, Elisha, I would say, just leave it, right? Let them be as they are. But the moment you see that they're not doing well, they're very quiet, then you know that something's wrong. If you feel that, you know, uh, they're not performing, they're underperforming, or, uh, you know, uh, they have a problem with somebody in the team, and they're not talking to somebody in the team, then those are things that we have to deal with. But if you see that they're quiet, yet they are happy, they're working well, uh, then you don't have to worry about it because we can't change people's, you know, nature. That's how God made them. That's how they are. Uh, so as leaders, we need to, you know, just find out those aspects, right? Uh, One-on-ones will really help as well. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Elisha. Uh, uh, yes, yes, Pastor. Yes. Yes, Thank yeah. you very So much. even in our church, right, we have a lot of youth. Um, I remember this, uh, there's this, there are some youth who are very energetic. So they, there was this two, three boys who came and they were, oh, we will clean the church. We will do this. And they were only a couple of Sundays. And I saw them and I said, okay, nice young guys. They were very happy to be at church. But they were jumping all over the place, trying to do everything. Uh, after a month, they sobered down. And, uh, they just come, they said. And uh, of course, they still like to come to church. And uh, But there are some who are very quiet. They do everything. And they don't. Uh, you know, there's this young man. He he plays the drums in our church, but very quiet. He doesn't talk to anyone, right? Like he talks only if you talk to him. That's how he is. Like even his parents say that's how he is. I I, I don't know what to do, but he's a very good boy, right? He would come early. He would open the church. He would clean everything, um, set the chairs, put on the sound system, and he would just sit quietly. Right. Very quiet. He'll be there for all the meetings. He'll be there for all the youth meetings and, you know, everything. He's there, Bible studies, uh, but very quiet. But he had a passion for God. Right? You, only if you talk to him, he will talk. Otherwise, he doesn't talk. Right? That's his nature. So, uh, you know, so you'll find people uh, like that, uh, especially among youth. And even uh, you know older folks as well. Uh, so as leaders, we are we we must you know have that ability to okay make sure that you know everything's uh, whether they are happy whether they are you know working towards the vision their life is all right. So uh, yeah, Abraham says, Pastor, please do we look at their ability to get the job done without giving excuses? Right, uh, that's a good question. Abraham, uh, yes, looking at the ability of getting the job done is very important. But uh, see, so, sometimes uh, there, there could be reasons as to why things could be done, uh, genuine reasons. Right? So, for example, uh, you know, there's a, somebody in the sound and setup team, and he's been asked to you know come early morning and set up the equipment. Um, but he doesn't turn up one Sunday morning. And the reason is maybe he lost a loved one in his home. So that's a genuine, uh, you know, we can't expect him to come and do sound and set up when he's lost some a loved one in his family, right? But then uh, you see repeated uh, excuses, right? Uh, rather than valid reasons. Uh, some of the excuses say, oh, pastor, night I, I went out uh, you know, we, I was with my friends on Saturday night. Oh, we were at home. We were, you know, you know just having a good time. We slept late. Um, my alarm didn't ring. I woke up. It was already eight o'clock in the morning. And that's an excuse, right? Of course, you give them chances, right? Uh, I'm sure Tarun will. Tarun was part of our, uh, you know, leadership, and I'm sure he'll have many. Uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> Tarun, you want to pitch in uh, any examples on this? Uh, you know, many times people will have different kind of excuses. Uh, but yes, firstly, we look at their ability. But if the excuses go on and on and on, that means their heart attitude is wrong. 
right? Uh, like, like we see, right, in the second point, leadership is about hard attitudes, proper hard attitude. If this person, he doesn't want to say, no, I don't want to do this, you know, I don't want to volunteer in this area. He doesn't want to make the leader feel bad. But he's giving excuses. He or she is giving excuses continually. Uh, then we ask them to step down because it's of no use of just having that, you know, ship uh, position and not doing anything about it. Right? And there are times there'll be genuine reasons. Uh, that is okay. It's valid. Uh, so Abraham, my answer to you is yes, we have to first look at the ability, uh, their ability. Yes, they're getting things done. Now, another thing could be also you can appoint leaders and train them on that. Right, uh, depending on the task. Now, for example, you've got a couple of young people. They join church. Uh, they say, "Hey, I, I want to, uh, you know, be part of the PPT team." Right? Uh, uh, you know, just just be serving in the PPT team. Uh, now, we can say we can't say no. You're not. You don't know how to honor laptops. How can you? you no, know, we we just teach them. It's not. It's not big you know doesn't need a big understanding maybe two hours and they'll be able to do it all by themselves so you give them a simple training get them to you know uh, serve in that area as well uh, but there are areas like in the worship team right if you they need to be skilled to get into that area and uh, uh, yes so giving excuses continually is something wrong but valid reasons every now and then that's all right right you you see the bigger picture, right? I hope that answers your question, Abraham. Yes, sir. thank you so much, sir. Thanks, Abraham. Right, so let's go to the next one. The first one we saw was servanthood. Second one was passion. Third one is self-control. The self-control is the ability to be self-governing demonstrated through self-discipline and self-restraint, right? The ability to be self-governing demonstrated through self-discipline and self-restraint. A leader does not have anyone checking on him all the time. So we must be able to have self-control. We must be self-governing. Now, for example, you have started a ministry or you're uh, you're the, you're the one who is in leadership of a certain position of a certain team uh nobody's checking on you right uh, uh nobody's saying hey, as a leader what have you done you know nobody's going to come and check on you right so it's very important that the leader keeps a check on himself his time his work his habits his productivity his interactions with people all of this is important Right, First Corinthians chapter nine and verse twenty-seven. Uh, this is what the great apostle Paul, the greatest of the Christian leader, says. Right, First uh, Corinthians nine twenty-seven. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. So Paul is, you know, he's done. I, I would say he's done everything right up to now. He says, but I myself, I discipline my body so that, and bring it into subject so that when, you know, I myself have preached the gospel so much, but it shouldn't be that I have preached it and I have only, I have been disqualified from this whole, uh, you know, place that God has for me. Right? So he's saying, I need to have self control. I need to be also look at my life. I keep preaching to others, and if my life is not right, what is the use? I mean, they get the reward. I'm not going to get any reward because I'm just preaching it, but, you know, nothing's happening to me. There's no change in me. Uh, Proverbs 17, 27 says, He who has knowledge spares his word, and a man of understanding is of calm spirit. A man of understanding is of a calm spirit. Self-control. You know, sometimes we may want to just scream and say, I'm done with this. You know, maybe in the workplace you say, oh God, it's been 10 years. I just want to, how do I get out of this? Right? And that's when we need to exercise this ability of self-control. Right? To be 
self restraint to be self disciplined and say okay it's just a phase it's just a season that we are going through as an organization as a leader i'm going through the season but i'm going to trust god uh proverbs 29:11 a fool vents all his feelings but a wise man holds them back so true a fool vents all his feelings imagine a leader goes uh you know and he he's just so upset he's stressed family issues and now he's got this team that he has to handle and he goes to his senior leaders and he vents out all his feelings to them uh, and the manager say okay so uh, then why don't you step down from the role and uh, we have a new leader available what is going to happen just because of that moment or that maybe a week or that season that he's going through he vent vented out all his feelings now the leadership thinks he's not you know we can choose better leaders who can do better than him he not only is in a place of uh you know he's uh, lost his respect but he's also in a place where he's disqualified from leadership so we need to have the ability of self control there'll be times in pastoral ministry as well or even in as leaders in the church uh people will come back to you on and on and you know they'll be sharing things with you uh they may repeat a lot of things uh but you know as as leaders we have to develop the ability to say okay be calm you know sometimes we may feel hey how many times are you saying the same thing to me uh why why are you repeating the same thing again and again we must understand that you know they are going through something in life we also are going through certain things right uh but we must have that ability to say uh okay as a leader i have to listen i have to make myself available for them I have to have self control right uh james 119 and 20 says remember this my dear friends everyone must be quick to listen but slow to speak and slow to become angry human anger does not achieve god's righteous purpose so these three attributes first one servanthood walk in a servant like attitude second have that passion always burning in us third self control let's go to the next point which is maintain proper people skills right now leadership is about people right uh we are it's about planning direction responsibility decision making raising up other leaders uh uh if, if, and and making and encouraging other people to follow you uh and leaders need to have a strong human side of their skills right of course there's this genuine interest genuine compassion uh is important but remember people are not robots people are not machines people are not you know just people who you know machines that you set okay 8 to 5 today go do your work that's not how it is working with people we need to be sensitive uh we need to understand their challenges understand their perspectives uh inspire people lift up people leaders celebrate other people the great apostle paul did that so many times he said i have what does he say to timothy he says my 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 brother he says in one place uh, my co laborers in christ now timothy was about 17 years old and paul was well advanced in the ministry he's seen these big visions and he started off his first missionary journey he's well advanced very matured in christ timothy is just 17 years old now very interesting paul doesn't say timothy ah timothy and you know timothy is here also uh you know i picked him up when he was 17 he he honors timothy and he says timothy my uh he's a cold laborer with me paul does not say timothy is here who is uh you know doing all the tasks that i've been asked him to do under my leadership he doesn't say all those things he just says timothy uh, my cold laborer in christ Timothy my brother in Christ right or then uh, he starts the book of Timothy episode of Timothy Timothy my son 
So he always refers to him with so much of respect. He celebrates the life of uh, Timothy. When you look at Titus, look at all the other people, Epaphroditus. Paul celebrates them. Remember John Mark, the one who uh, was in the first missionary journey and uh, in the middle when they reached Galatia and he said, no, no, I can't take this. I'm going to go back. And he goes back. And Paul gets so upset that in the second missionary journey, Paul and Barnabas had to part ways. But in the end of his ministry, Paul writes and says, bring John Mark to me. He's of great help to my ministry. So we see that as leaders, Apostle Paul celebrated people. And we are to celebrate people's success, the way they worked, honor them, celebrate them. Uh, rewards and recognitions are some things as organizations that we can give our people, even in ministry, give it to people, right? honor them for their work, celebrate them, right? and it, it really helps them. It will really help the organization. Uh, next point, if the head is not right, the body won't be right. Now, if the leader is not right, the head is, the body will not be right. Now here, uh, just looking at the uh, analogy of a role of a head to a human body. If the head, I've got a cup here, right here next to me. If my head doesn't send the signals to take that cup, I'm not going to take it. Right, but if, uh, right now, if my head tells me, sends me signals, hey, Take the cup. So I take the cup, right? If the head is not right, the body is not going to function. So, you know, people who are, uh, you know, unable to do certain things um, physically, uh, not everyone, right? I'm just giving an example. So uh, somewhere, if something is wrong, they are not able, their body doesn't function properly, right? So... If the head malfunctions, the rest of the body is affected and sometimes it is incapacitated. That means there's no capacity in it. If the leader is not right, his motivations is not right, his decisions, his actions, his leadership qualities, his hard attitudes are not right, the same kind of people will be developed or same kind of wrong kind of people with wrong ideas will be raised up. So if the head is not right, the body won't be right. If you have a leader who's always gossiping and talking behind other people's back, talking about other ministries, condemning other ministries, what's going to happen? The church will be filled with people who are gossiping and condemning people. It's going to just pass on. Why? Our leader is doing it, so we will do it. Right? The head is not right. The body won't be right, right? Uh, yeah, we've run out of time, so uh, we'll stop here. We'll pick up this from uh, tomorrow, and we look to complete this chapter on leadership, right? Uh, so let's just close in prayer. Uh, uh, maybe, Prabhakar, uh, can you please close in prayer for us? Thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we look to you oh god father we thank you you are a faithful god lord father we thank you you are a model of oh jesus father as we go through this lord may it speak to us throughout our day oh father may it become lord our routine of oh father may it flow in us oh father jesus so that we will represent you well oh father we will not be a perfect lord example of you are oh father jesus that we will love people that we will be a good leader of oh father following the passion of oh father jesus having lord your right attitudes of oh father and we also pray that all our inhibitions will leave us of oh father that we will be uh, we will glorify your name of oh father we thank you jesus we thank you for our teacher of oh father blessing us thank you for imparting us may your name be glorified in jesus name we pray lord Amen. Amen. Thank you, Prabhakar. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week ahead. Uh, anyways, I'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Bye. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you. God Thank bless. You, Pastor. God bless you.